Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimme Camper. So welcome to this week's adventure. And boy, is it a hot one. It says it's like 92 degrees out here with the heat index of eight. But I'm telling you, it's a hot one. Got in the truck earlier. It said the temperature was like 126 degrees when I got in there. And it went down a couple of degrees before I could take a picture of it. And I mean, that was just sitting out here in the sun. My campsite's right on the other side of this beach. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. So guys, bear with me because we are at a public beach here and there's kids playing down here. It's getting ready to rain. I'm trying to work this in through the video because it might be raining tomorrow. I hope this rain helps cool things off around here because, man, it's just horrid. My two air conditioners, my portable and my 15,000 BTU can't keep up with this stuff. And I mean, it's, it's just brutal out here this week. That water is like bath water yesterday. I got in it to cool off. It didn't really help. So like I say, this week we're at Floating Mill Recreation Area. It's on Center Hill Lake, which is part of the Caney River. And we're about halfway between Crossville and Nashville. And we're in Middle Tennessee here, so I did have to make that time change when I came over. This is just outside of our normal travel window for a good weekend trip. But it's somewhere that I wanted to try because it looked like they had some great sites right on the water. I really love the Army Corps of Engineers sites. This is the third experience that we've had. Now the first two, I'm gonna tell you, they're hard to beat because especially that first one, I think I went to like the creme de la creme first and that was Gunner Hill down in Montgomery, Alabama. I got a video on that, check that out up here. But that was like the best campground that I've ever been to as far as just the amenities and stuff for the price. And the second one, of course, was Victoria Campground, just north of Atlanta. It was also nice and spacious. And this is a little bit different, but I still like it. It's just hard to live up to those previous expectations. So, this is Floating Mill, like I said. You reserve it through recreation.gov as you do all of the other Army Corps of Engineers sites. I will tell you, if you've got the access pass or the senior pass, you'll get half off. So that brings this stuff down to like $15 a night. And it's water and electric hookups only. There's no sewer hookups here. They do have 50 amp. I was kind of surprised at that. They have 50 amp, 30 amp, and 20 amp, obviously. And then water at most of the sites. The tent sites, I noticed they don't have any electrical hookups. And also just general campground information. Most of the tent sites are on one side of the campground. And on that side, you're gonna have a lot of hills and a lot of steps to deal with. And over here on the RV side, there's good and there's bad. That's the way it is everywhere, guys. They try to fit too many campers in there because everybody's trying to share the space. And so a lot of these are gonna be really close together. Some of them I'm going to tell you to avoid just because of the hill that's there whenever you're backing in and stuff. But all that'll come at the end of the video. While we're talking about the campground and the cons there, like I say, number one's that, you know, some of these sites are real close to other sites. Number two is that, you know, a lot of these sites are kind of on the small side. My site's small, but it's right beside the beach. I mean, this is my front yard. And so I feel like that's a pretty fair trade-off in that aspect. Another negative thing that I'd have to say about the park is that it's hard to navigate. The guy told me when I came in, you're gonna go down to the crossroads and turn left and then turn left again and then I would be right here by my campsite at the beach. Well, when you go in, I mean, it does have a clear sign there for sites one through whatever turn right. So I turned right there. Well, then the cross section, there's not a sign or anything there. And so I truthfully would have missed it if the guy in front of me hadn't already missed it and was trying to back up his rig to make that turn. And so it's understandable that people are going to get turned around in here. They could just use a few extra signs and that's really not a big deal for them to fix. I do want you to know when you're coming in from the highway, you're going to take this road and it's going to feel like it's going to go into nowhere. You're going to go kind of down into a gorge. The road's okay. It's a little bit narrow, but it's not bad. If you go camp in places, you're gonna be used to that kind of stuff. But you're gonna get to a sign that's gonna say campground straight. And then about 50 feet behind that sign, it's gonna say floating mill to the right. And so that kind of confused me. So don't do like I did and keep going straight because you're gonna go down to the marina. 
it's very jumbled down there as far as which way traffic's supposed to flow. I accidentally went the wrong way because it looked like I couldn't go one way. Apparently I was supposed to go that way. But I was able to go down there and turn around. But don't do like me. Take a right where it says floating mill and just come on in here. Okay guys, so I had one more thing to add here. Actually two more things. The worst parts about this park. And I'm not usually one to say that things are bad and this and that and the other. But there's two things uh, that are essentially the same thing that'll probably keep me from coming back to that park with my 30 foot camper. I'm gonna let you know what those are right now. So if you're down by the beach and you wanna go back out or go to the dump station, you gotta make a real sharp left turn. And I can make that turn with my 2500 truck without having to make a three point turn and just barely. And it's also going uphill. So that complicates things when you have a trailer, especially when you have a fifth wheel like I do, because that bed kind of was getting close to making contact with the uh, top of the camper there. And so the reason that I'm gonna say that I wouldn't go back there again with a camper that's more than like 20 foot long is because I couldn't make that turn. You might could if you had a travel trailer. It might have to back up a couple of times, but I couldn't make that turn, so I had to go straight. Now, if you go straight, the issue is you can probably make it through there okay, but it comes out right at the exit of the park, right by the uh, little guard shack there. Well, the problem with that is you can't get to the dump station from that way. It's still, it's coming down a pretty steep angle when it comes down, so you might run into that same issue. Now, I ended up doing a U-turn because there was a little bit of a parking lot down there that nobody was parked at, so it was about three to four car lane widths wide and I was able to do U-turn and come back out and it's still pretty, pretty sharp, pretty close and being able to do that. But I did it and so that got me up to the dump station. Now the dump station, a lot of Corps of Engineers parks, this is where they fall a little bit short and they're always like an afterthought. And so the issue with the dump station there is it's very shallow. It was hard to get in and out of um, it wasn't as hard as what I thought it would be because the turn's pretty steep after the after the little dump station there and then there's a handrail with some steps there. I was able to have it with enough room but still it's kind of like an afterthought. But the issue for me is mainly that you can't get to it. You either have to make that turn that's almost impossible to turn to get up to it or you got to go all the way around the road and come out at the guard check. If you come out at the guard check you still can't get to the dump station because you can't turn left and go into the dump station because you're going the wrong way. So you still have to go down that hill and turn around somehow and come back up the hill. So that's the one thing that I would say would keep me from coming back to this park. Otherwise, it was a great stay. It was a nice beach. It was just hot. And if you had a, a site where there's some shade, it's going to be great. So if you have a shorter rig, you can make those turns. It's all for you. Back to your regularly scheduled program. All right, so let's talk amenities. So cell service, we always go over cell service. Cell service here is one, two bars on 4G LTE. I will say that it's decently usable late at night after everybody goes to sleep. I can even stream a few things. I watched a couple of episodes of a show, but during the day, you ain't gonna get squat unless you go back up to the highway. Not squat down here till about midnight the bathrooms here are nice they're clean they're not climate controlled though so that can be a little bit of a downside but you know they're just basic bathrooms they have like uh, it's like frp on the wall so it's going to be nice and easy to clean easy to keep clean but as far as like the climate controlled high-end stuff this isn't where you're going to find that other amenities here at the campground are going to be the beach they have a boat ramp over here they have a little bit of a playground in here and those three things are just for campers. So this is not the day use area. Then they have another day use area that's right next to the campground where there's another boat dock and there's another beach and there's another playground. And so that should, you know, kind of help keep the numbers to a minimum here. You're still gonna have quite a few people in here when it's hot, but you know, nowhere near what you're gonna have over at the day use area. And I started to drive by there and I totally forgot about it but it looks pretty much just like this, only I think it's a little bit bigger. So like I said, our campsite's campsite 28. It's right beside the water. It is a little bit narrow. It was a little bit 
it wasn't hard to back in, but it made me a little anxious because it was kind of an, at an angle um, getting down there. And then the site's pretty narrow. I had to move the picnic table down to the back of the site so that I'd have enough room to open up my slide. I had plenty of room to start with, but I didn't have enough on, on the one side next to the power in order to put that slide out. So I had to move over a little bit. All in all, I've been happy with it, except it's doggone hot. And there ain't no uh, shade out here or anything. And it's like the hottest week of the year, I think. I mean, it's, woo, buddy. I already told you how hot it is. So we won't go through that again. All right, so now we're going to get to our preferred sites here. So these are going to be in the order that I would pick if I was going to stay in them. In the first site that's going to be on top of my list, it's not the one that I'm actually at. I mean, it's a great site. But it's actually site six. So site six, it's going to have a little bit of some downsides because you do have to kind of back while you're going down a hill to get in there but it's a larger site it's right where you're facing the water and it's actually over close near where the boat dock and boat ramp is so if you have a boat or some water toys then that's going to be the site for you even if you don't i still think it's a tad bit better it's not right by the beach but it does have a little bit of shade which is going to help when it's real high like this the second site that i recommend is site 28 just like we've said already that's where we're staying at. It's right by the beach here. I really liked it, except for I wish it was just a tad bit wider and I wish there was a tad bit of shade up here. The next site I'm gonna recommend, Site 29. It's just kind of right across from the beach. It is across the road, but it's a nice open site and there is a little bit more shade up there. The next one I'm gonna recommend specifically, if you're not wanting to be near the beach area, you don't really care if you go swimming, you just want a pretty lookout. It's site 52. Site 52 is a very long pull through site. It's a little sneaky to get in there, I think, but it's a huge site and it's up on the hill and it overlooks all the beautiful lake out here. Another one that's not right on the water that I would recommend if you was looking for somewhere would be site 22. I believe it was a pull through site. It had a little bit of space there. A lot of the ones that are right there in front of 22 that are on the water, they're all crammed together right there. There's no shade there. And for those reasons, I wouldn't personally like pick there just because there's better options. But if that's all that's left and you want to be close to the beach, go for it. Another pretty decent site, Site 30. Site 30 is a level pad. It's across from the beach again, across the road. The only thing there is when you back up, you're going to be backing up uphill on the ramp that's part of your site. But the actual pad itself where you park at is pretty level. You do have a couple of trees in Site 30 as well to give you some shade. All right, guys, sorry if you can hear it, but there's an idiot boat behind me blasting music, even though I've already moved like four times to get away from loud people. Anyway, the next site that I'm going to recommend is Site 15. If you've got a boat and you want to be down there by the boat ramps and stuff, it's still a pretty decent site with some pretty decent shade right there. It's not in like the best area as far as the campground goes, but I mean, it's pretty centrally located and it's a, it's a nice, decent size site. If you're looking for a tent site, the site that I recommend, Site 31, it's right next to the beach as well. Now it's not an electric hookup site because it's made for tents and they don't have any water, I don't think, down there and they don't have any electric. The guy down there right now has got a little generator running. Um, I don't guess they have any issues with that here on the campground. And you know, it's a nice site that overlooks the water. But about all the rest of them, you're gonna be up on the hill up there somewhere and I'm just not so sure about that. All right, so let's talk about sites that I would avoid. I would avoid site 51. Site 51 in particular, it's got like rocks stacked up, kind of like uh, edgers for a garden or something. And it's got them stacked up about a foot high all the way around the campsite, including where you would be backing in. And I'd be afraid that you'd scrape your truck or something on there. So I would avoid site 51 personally. Most of the rest of these sites that I would avoid are all gonna be because they're in areas where they're tightly packed together. So I would avoid 38 through 50, just because they seem to be real close together and they're kinda of on a hill back there and they're hard to get into. And then I would also not recommend one through 10 with the exception of site six, which was my number one pick because it's down there on the end. But the same thing, one through 10 with the exception of six, they're all kinda of packed in there it's going straight up a hill where you're having to back in. 
and it's just not as much space up there so i would avoid those but guys thanks for following me on my adventure hopefully i'm not like having some heat exhaustion here because i'm telling you this stuff is crazy it's almost too hot to camp with a camper in an air conditioner i'm telling you this is rough stuff but we're going to be uh, leaving out tomorrow we're going to go down to ray springs give that another shot and that's dry camping down there makes me even more leery since the whole two air conditioners aren't keeping up here because i can only run one on my generator but we're going to go we're going to give it a shot and we're going to hope the water's a little bit cooler than it is up here in this real shallow water but we'll see you next time thanks for uh watching us feel free to hit that like and subscribe button do not forget to hit that subscribe button